let's dive into the fascinating world of psychology and explore Eric Erikson's theory of the eight stages of development. This theory suggests that our personalities develop and evolve throughout our lives as we navigate different challenges and experiences. Each stage is characterized by a unique conflict or task, and how we handle these challenges can greatly impact our psychological well-being. Now, imagine a typical mind in a stereotypical world. This refers to the idea that there are societal expectations and norms that influence how we perceive ourselves and others. However, not everyone fits into these stereotypes, and individuals with atypical minds may face additional challenges in navigating these stages of development. So let's take a closer look at each stage and how it may affect someone with an atypical mind. 1. Trust versus mistrust. This stage occurs during infancy. A typical mind in a stereotypical world might learn to trust their caregivers and develop a sense of security. However, someone with an atypical mind may struggle to trust others due to past experiences or difficulties in understanding social cues. 2. Autonomy versus shame and doubt. This stage happens during early childhood. A typical mind in a stereotypical world might explore their independence and develop a sense of control over their actions. On the other hand, someone with an atypical mind may experience shame or doubt if they struggle with certain tasks or face limitations that others don't understand. 3. Initiative versus guilt. This stage takes place during the preschool years. A typical mind in a stereotypical world might develop a sense of purpose and take initiative in their activities. However, someone with an atypical mind may feel guilty or discouraged if they face difficulties in participating or keeping up with their peers. 4. Industry versus inferiority. This stage occurs during the school age years. A typical mind in a stereotypical world might develop a sense of competence and pride in their accomplishments. Conversely, someone with an atypical mind may face challenges in meeting academic or social expectations, leading to feelings of inferiority. 5. Identity versus role confusion. This stage happens during adolescence. A typical mind in a stereotypical world might explore their identity and develop a sense of self. However, someone with an atypical mind may struggle with societal expectations and face confusion or difficulty in finding their place in the world. 6. Intimacy versus isolation. This stage takes place during early adulthood. A typical mind in a stereotypical world might form meaningful relationships and experience intimacy. For someone with an atypical mind, forming and maintaining relationships may be more challenging due to social barriers or difficulties in understanding social cues. 7. Generativity versus stagnation. This stage occurs during middle adulthood. A typical mind in a stereotypical world might contribute to society and feel a sense of purpose. However, someone with an atypical mind may face obstacles in finding fulfilling work or may struggle to fit into traditional societal roles. 8. Integrity versus despair. This stage happens during late adulthood. A typical mind in a stereotypical world might reflect on their life with a sense of fulfillment and wisdom. Someone with an atypical mind may face additional challenges in accepting and finding meaning in their life experiences. So, as you can see, the stages of development proposed by Eric Erikson can have a profound impact on individuals with atypical minds in a stereotypical world. It's important to recognize and support individuals who may face unique challenges in navigating these stages, ensuring inclusivity and understanding in our society. So let's delve deeper into the concept of neurodiversity and its importance in understanding and embracing the diversity of human minds. Neurodiversity is a concept that recognizes and celebrates the natural variations in neurological functioning among individuals. It emphasizes the idea that there is no single normal or typical brain, but rather a wide range of neurological differences that contribute to the richness and diversity of human experiences. Neurodiversity challenges the notion that certain neurological conditions such as autism, ADHD or dyslexia are inherently disorders or deficits that need to be fixed or cured. Instead, it views these conditions as a natural part of human variation with their own strengths, talents and unique ways of perceiving and interacting with the world. 
Embracing neurodiversity means recognising that individuals with atypical minds have valuable contributions to make in various domains of life, including education, employment, arts and sciences. It involves creating inclusive environments that accommodate and appreciate different ways of thinking, learning and communicating. By promoting neurodiversity, we can foster a society that values the strengths and talents of individuals with atypical minds, provides equal opportunities for their growth and development, and ensures their full participation and inclusion in all aspects of life. It is important to note that embracing neurodiversity does not mean ignoring or dismissing the challenges and support needs that individuals with atypical minds may have. It means acknowledging and addressing these challenges in a way that respects their unique perspectives and experiences and providing the necessary support and accommodations to enable their success and well-being. Overall, the concept of neurodiversity encourages us to move away from a deficit-based model of understanding and supporting individuals with atypical minds and towards a more inclusive and empowering approach that recognises and celebrates the diversity of human minds.